Let's talk about the best GPUs out there for 3D animation. A lot of people out there are going to be looking for different ways into illustration and animation, but they aren't going to want to drop too much cash without seeing a diversified return. What I mean by diversified return is a GPU that can offer up great design performance whilst also being a great GPU for gaming. I will try to be a little diverse but more focused on 3D animation since that's what the whole video is about. Computer animation and 3D rendering is a tricky field to get into. Not only do you have to have the talent to learn how to create and model within a virtual environment, but you also have to make sure you have a computer ready and available to take on the workload that is necessary in order to complete difficult animation and 3D rendering. Basically, if your PC isn't powerful enough, then you are going to be out of luck when it comes to actually working on the projects you want to. One would expect the graphics card to play a larger role in giving a smooth viewpoint and software experience, but in animation stage, this is usually not the case. This doesn't mean the GPU can be ignored, but it's really the bottleneck and usually has lots of headroom left whilst waiting for the CPU to do its calculation before um, it displays the output. This can change when you depend on certain features that only the GPU can calculate. This includes OpenGL features such as anti-aliasing, anisotropic filtering, SSAO, real-time shadows, and many more. These types of features are also found in Maya's Viewpoint 2.0 and Blender's EV real-time engine, and you would benefit from a strong GPU here. If you don't rely on realistic viewport but animate mostly in shaded low-quality wireframe preview modes without any fancy effect, then you can manage a lower tier graphics card such as um, the NVIDIA GTX 1660 Super. Let's take a look at some of the current best consumer GPUs for animation. Both GPU manufacturers, AMD and Nvidia, have some excellent cards for animation, although Nvidia's cards usually do better in most 3D applications and should be your first choice, especially if you plan on GPU rendering with any of these cards. The process of GPU rendering, of course, is much more demanding than viewport animation, but this topic is so complex that I'm thinking of making a dedicated video for best graphics card for GPU rendering. As a minimum for animation, I would recommend an NVIDIA GTX 1650 Super, which already gives excellent performance in most 3D and 2D animation applications. An RTX 3060 Ti is a sweet spot between great active work performance and rendering performance. And if you do a lot of GPU rendering, you should consider buying a higher tier GPU such as the RTX 3080 or even an RTX 3090. If you need certain professional features such as 10-bit color support for monitors, then you should consider either an NVIDIA RTX series GPU or an AMD GPU. Those are the GPUs that comes with 10-bit color support. The NVIDIA GTX and RTX cards have an excellent performance to price ratio especially compared to the nvidia quadro cards and you can gpu render on them extremely fast amd gpus can perform well too but the problem here is that many software vendors optimize for nvidia cards and many gpu render engines support nvidia's gpu only which is the cuda that is why you rarely see an amd gpu being recommended for a computer or workstation in animation amd manufacturers make excellent gpus but the software support unfortunately just isn't on the same level yet as nvidia that is certainly a problem to some people who want to animate and game at the same time on amd graphics cards okay doing away with rtx and amd let's talk about the nvidia quadro cards or you can categorize all of them under the enterprise cards whilst the geforce cards are more diversified we also have the quadro by nvidia the Quadro line of NVIDIA GPUs bring high-resolution visualization technology to a variety of vertical markets. We have the likes of big engineering houses, 3D designers, um, animators, professional medical imaging applications such as patients, 
diagnosis and anyone whose job depends heavily on computer graphics with high resolution and sometimes instant preview. Getting a quadro card should really be a question of how much money you can and are willing to invest in your business. Sometimes the skills and the kind of work you actually do don't call for a quadro card. The Quadro is designed for most professional 3D applications out there for various companies. The drivers for these cars are streamlined to make professional application run flawless. Whilst GeForce cars are more consumer based, with its drivers being streamlined to run games and perform consumer level 3D works. I get most people asking why? Why are Nvidia Enterprise cards so expensive? Let me list a couple of them for you. Number one is stability, reliability. Enterprise grade product with enterprise grade support. Application certification. Application, okay, let me talk a little about application certification to make you understand the Quadro series better. Nvidia works closely with independent software vendors such as SAP, Autodesk, and many others to ensure these applications are fully certified on Nvidia professional cards. Now, in contrast, the GeForce cards, which is the consumer based cards, do not have the certification, meaning that users can suffer from lack of performance. Let's take for instance Tesla. Optimization and certification are applied on the cards on certain categories such as computational finance, climate, weather and ocean modeling, data science and analytics, defense and intelligence, deep learning and machine learning, manufacturing CAD, CAE, media and entertainment, medical imaging, oil and gas, safety and security, blah blah blah. The enterprise cards are not a consumer based graphics card. Now don't forget that all that I mentioned under Tesla could one way or the other be running whilst the card is still on top level power. No lagging. No lagging. None of this is to say that you cannot use one card to do what the other does. However, spending three hours on AutoCAD drawing only to have your application crash and lose all your work because you chose to use a GeForce might not sit well with some people. Or alternatively, spending 8000 on a Quadro card to play Doom might be an overkill. If your card crashes during a game, you only lose your progress, reboot and start again. But if your card crashes or injects artifacts into your mammography or CT scan, um, this can actually kill a human being, for real. And that is why Quadro cards are a top choice for most top tier level professional houses and certain companies. Running benchmarks on the top end Quadro card and the top end GeForce isn't going to drop any significant huge numbers, but the preferential difference is what counts. So take it this way Quadro cards are for industrial 3D works and not gaming. While well, some might game on it, but it's not going to last as you aren't going to get any driver updates for games. When it comes to the GeForce cards, let's take it as an all-round car all right where it tries to um, sit in between gaming and 3d now other groups of people who do 3d works with the geforce card can't complain about it bugs because they already know what they went in for using geforce cards um, once a while may crash on maya cinema 4d or 3d's max but one thing i know is if you save your work every three minutes um, you aren't going to have a lot to complain about let me end with this when it comes to um, building computers for individuals and companies i choose what cards to go in for carefully if it's a 3d animation company then certainly they aren't going to have anything to do with gaming so the best choice i advise them on is to agree on purchasing a quadro card it's easy for you not to want a quadro just because of its price point but hey if you are running a company that majors a lot on 3d works then the quadro card is worth it but if I'm building a computer for an individual, especially ones that aren't technical at all, then um, I tend to ask a lot of questions before going in for either a GeForce card or a Quadro card. Okay, I hope this video answered most of your questions. But if you still have any questions that are still bothering you on graphics card and 3D animation, um, kindly leave them in the comment section below and I'll be glad to answer them. Until my next video, peace out.